Hey everyone, Victor is here, and in this video I want to talk about the reductive amination, which is one of the most widely used and flexible methods of amine synthesis. The general idea of the reductive amination is fairly straightforward and simple. We are going to start with a carbonyl, either an aldehyde or a ketone. We will react that carbonyl with an amine, typically it's going to be either primary or a secondary amine, and we normally do this reaction in slightly acidic conditions. We need Need just a smidge of acid for the catalysis. Hence, I am showing the pH 5 here, which indicates that we are barely acidic. And at this point, we are going to get the corresponding amine intermediate. However, that is not our final product, because after we have this intermediate, we are going to reduce our carbon-nitrogen double bond, making a corresponding amine. And the awesome part about the reductive amination is that this reaction can produce either primary, secondary, or or even tertiary amines, depending on the nature of the starting materials. So it is extremely flexible and can potentially give you almost any amine imaginable. So let's take a look at the mechanism of this reaction. So the first part of the mechanism is going to be the amine formation, and in this case, to describe this mechanism, my starting materials are going to be butanol, an aldehyde, and the ethylamine as my amine. Step number one in the amine formation is going to be the nucleophilic attack from the nitrogen onto our carbonyl, giving us the following intermediate. Sometimes you might see that the carbonyl is being protonated first, so we're going to make a positively charged uh, intermediate with this O- being already protonated and having an uh, OH there instead of O-. I talk more about that in my amine formation and hydrolysis video, so if you want to learn more about those aspects, go and check that one out. Now, the next thing that's going to be happening here, I'm going to bring the second equivalent of my amine, and I'm going to use that one to deprotonate my intermediate at the nitrogen, and then I'm also going to show a step when I'm protonating my oxygen, giving me the following intermediate, which we technically can call hemiaminal. And as I've mentioned a moment ago, it really doesn't matter how exactly you're going to be doing your proton transfers here, so if you want to do them in a different order, or your instructor or textbook shows them in a slightly different order, that is still perfectly fine. Now, at the next point in this reaction, we are going to take our OH group, and we are going to convert that into a good living group, and that is where the the trace amounts of our acid going to come and play. Because now that acid can protonate our OH, turning that into a good living group. So now my living group is going to live with the help of nitrogen, so that nitrogen is going to help our living group go away, making the following aminium ion, the protonated ion. And the very last thing that is left for us here is to deprotonate that ion. So I'm going to bring back our good old friend and second equivalent of our amine that going to come in, pull that proton off, giving us our amine intermediate. And we know that this is only half point in our reaction because now we are going to move to the next stage of our reaction, our second step, where we are going to be reducing our amine. Now, when it comes to the reduction, we have quite a few options here. For the purposes of this mechanism, I will choose lithium aluminum hydride reduction. But we could also use sodium boron hydride, or we could also use hydrogen on heterogeneous catalysts like palladium or platinum to accomplish the reduction here. While the reduction with complex hydrides typically works better, occasionally you might need to use hydrogen on palladium because maybe you have functional groups in your molecule that are sensitive to complex hydrides and that can mess up your molecule. So everything depends on the exact uh, example that you're working with. So to show this part of the mechanism, I will show my uh, aluminum hydride and that aluminum hydride going to attack the carbon of our C and double bond, effectively adding the hydride or hydrogen with two electrons to our carbon and giving us the following negatively charged intermediate, which we are of course going to 
protonate with the acidic workup, which is our step number two over here in this sequence, and make our neutral amine, which is our final product in this reaction. Now, while having a two-step process, first imine formation and then reduction of our imine is not that big of a deal, we can do better. We can do what is commonly referred to as a one-pot or a single-pot procedure, where we are going to do the imine formation and reduction all together. And in order to do a single pot procedure, I would have to modify my conditions a little bit. So I'm going to start with a ketone and an amine. That part is uh, same as it would have been for any kind of reductive amination. We can take an aldehyde or a ketone and react it with an amine. But my reducing agent here is going to be specifically sodium cyanoborohydride. And that cyano group over here is there for a reason. Regular borohydride would not work here because regular borohydride will reduce our ketone right away and we won't be able to do the reaction the way we want it. However, sodium borohydride is not going to be able to reduce our ketone, well, it's not going to be able to do it fast enough. So we will have time for the amine to react with the ketone first. So the way this reaction is going to work, at the beginning, we are going to start just like we would start normally for any reductive amination by making our imine via the nucleophilic addition from our nitrogen onto a carbonyl, giving us our charged intermediate. Then from this point, I'm going to combine all of my proton transfer steps here by just saying proton on transfer and drawing my intermediate here with the leaving group right away so I can show that from this point we are going to have our leaving group going away making our aminium intermediate here the positively charged aminium ion and here is the fun part when it comes to my sodium cyanoborohydride this species over here the presence of the cyanide in this molecule this cyanide that I have attached to my boron makes this species into a less lesser nucleophile, less powerful nucleophile than a regular sodium borohydride. Which means that when it comes to our carbonyls, they are going to be safe in the presence of the sodium cyanoborohydride as that it doesn't react with carbonyls fast enough. However, when it comes to the aminium ions, the plus charge on the nitrogen makes those species more electrophilic than carbonyls and now those guys are no longer safe in the presence of the uh, sodium cyanoborohydride. Sodium cyanoborohydride will be able to react with the uh, aminium ion because the aminium is more electrophilic. So now, as soon as I form this aminium ion, the sodium cyanoborohydride is going to come in and immediately reduce that species, giving us our final product right away. And while on paper it might not be a big deal to draw an extra step in your synthesis or your reaction or whatever you're doing there, in reality each extra step that you draw on paper will translate into hours and sometimes maybe even a whole day of extra work in the lab. So it's always a good idea to save some time in the lab because I don't know about you guys, but I would rather go home and have a cup of tea with a book rather than sit and do the, you know, chemistry for extra two, three, five hours, whatever might be the case. So because of that, the one pot or single pot procedure with sodium cyanoborohydride is probably going to be the main method in the uh, reductive amination sequence that you are going to be seeing in your course. And while sodium cyanoborohydride is not the only reagent that can do that trick, it is definitely one of the most common ones. So I will just limit our discussion to this guy within the scope of this video, but if your instructor gives you other similar reagents, uh, you definitely need to know them as well for the exam purposes. So now, armed with the information about the mechanism and how the procedure works, let's look at some examples starting with this one. So here I am reacting my cyclic ketone, cyclohexanone, with my isopropyl amine in the presence of sodium cyanoborohydride. So that is going to be my single pot procedure, one pot procedure. So I'm going to do everything in, in the scope of one step here. So mechanistically speaking, my first step is going to be attack on my carbonyl over here, giving me the following charged intermediate. Then, like in last example, I'm going to combine all of my proton transfer steps and get straight to the point where I can do the leaving group dissociation. So I'm going to 
kick my leaving group out, making my imenium intermediate, and then, as soon as I have that, my sodium cyanide borohydride is going to come in, reduce that, and give me my final product looking like this. Pretty easy, right? Now, how about this example? Here, I'm reacting a ketone with this cyclic amine over here. The idea here is still the same. It doesn't matter that my amine is a cycle. And I'm also doing this reaction in the presence of sodium cyanide borohydride. So again, as I would expect, this is a single pot procedure. So let's start by doing the nucleophilic attack from our nitrogen onto our carbonyl, making the following intermediate. Then we are going to do a bunch of proton transfers, resulting in the formation of our leaving group, which we are going to quickly kick out of our molecule, giving us the corresponding imenium ion. And yes, in this case, nitrogen doesn't have a hydrogen, but we don't really care about that part. We are not trying to make a stable imine here, after all, because now, once we have this compound, our cyanoborohydride is going to come in and immediately attack the carbon of this imenium ion, reducing this molecule, giving us our final product, which in this particular case is going to be a tertiary amine. So far, so good? All right. I have one more awesome example here for you. As before, we are taking our ketone, this molecule over here, reacting it with an amine in the presence of the cyanoborohydride, so we are expecting our normal single pot reductive amination reaction here. But here is something interesting. We have two carbonyls on our starting material, and that part is going to be fairly important in the middle of the mechanism, so let's see how it works. As before, we are going to start with the attack from the nitrogen onto our carbonyl, giving us our charged intermediate. Then we're going to have our bunch of proton transfers, making our leaving group, which is going to go away, giving us our imenium ion, which we are going to reduce right away, giving us our amine just like the way we expected, so nothing tricky here, right? or is there? And of course, there will be some trickery here, because otherwise that wouldn't be fun. We now have an amine, the nitrogen, right over here, and we have this carbonyl in the molecule. And remember how at the beginning of this mechanism I said that that part is going to be relevant? Well, as soon as these two species see each other as a part of the same molecule, they are immediately going to react with each other because, well, nothing stops them from reacting with each other. Nitrogen is a good nucleophile, carbonyl is an excellent electrophile, and they're literally right next to each other, so of course they're going to react. But in the course of this reaction, we are going to make a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 membered ring, which is going to look like this with my atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 being right here. Now, from this point, we are going to have our normal proton transfer cascade, resulting in the formation of our leaving group, which is going to get kicked out of the molecule, now giving us this cyclic imenium ion, which we are going to immediately reduce with our cyanoborohydride, giving us our final product, which in this case is going to be this cyclic amine. And, you know, if you like organic structure, you put a ring on it. So, what do you think about reductive amination reaction? Easy enough? Let me know about that in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, you can tell me that by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Your likes and comments really help in promoting these videos so more students can see them. Watch this video next, and I will see you next time.